Hi folks, welcome back. Bonnie Lad Adventures. Today's adventure, I'm going to be wedged in between the bus stop and Ryan Mental Hospital. So come on, see if I can get across the road without getting knocked over or spotted. Right, just a lucky block. Let's get in. Shit. <laughs> As you can see, private access. Let's get in here. I is in. I think this is me camp for tonight. There's a bus stop there. But I think I've got a bit coverage. Might not get spotted. So I'm behind this tree. Very sparse bush because it's winter. As you know, if there's any bush, I mean. And we have Cherry Knoll Hospital right there. And I'm going to get set up. Not much space here, as usual. But it's big enough. Sparsh bush, but I mean, I'll see you when I'm set up. Right, that's me tent up, and I tried to do a slow mo, but I mean, too much of an exposed. I had to keep stop filming. Basically, there's a bus stop there, and I'm not covered. It's basically three metres away and as soon as I started getting set up it's only somebody in a black jacket walking along with an Alsatian straight past us so that stopped filming there's a path coming down here so I just can't wait Hospital there, 10 metres away from us. I don't think I want to get away with this one. Too exposed with a big winter. <clears throat> that put me tent up in the brambles. Because the ground here, you can't really see it, but it's uneven. So that was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I've been here at least three quarters of an hour. But I haven't been spotted. I mean, it's going to get busy soon. Everybody's going to be finishing work. So I think I'll have to get in my tent just sit still because I'm moving about I'm go I'm going to get spotted but boy did I nearly did I nearly shit bricks when that it was a woman walking a dog but she had a jacket on like me I thought it was a security guard it was only an Alsatian as well <laughs> and then when she went people came to the bus stop two sets of people so been a nightmare but I mean like I see it I mean so I think um, it's definitely time for a sit down and a can to calm the nerves see you in a bit <whistles> relax time well I can't relax because 
just hit me, hit me, just walking past, walking down. stealthiest or riskiest camps I've ever done because I can't hear anybody because of the road and the walk straight past us. It's a bloke just walk past us with his dog, same as that woman with that Alsatian. I'm just going to have to sit here and not move until it gets dark before I can do anything, before I can do any cooking or anything. It's starting to get dark now and the street lights is coming on. I think the dog walkers will start going home and everybody will come out from work if have gone home and then I can start to relax. But I have some beautiful food to cook. Tranja, you said. Just watching out for that blood coming back with his dog. I won't be able to settle till, till it starts getting dark. For food, I have a blue dragon, padded tie, noodles, prawns, nuts. Spring onions, you name it. It's going to be a, a fantastic one. This I'm going to have to keep. I have to keep. I even know there's a road coming across. Just want me to settle till it's dark. <laughs> when it gets a bit darker, I'll show you around into the grounds a bit. So guys, this is why I've literally not been able to not been able to move. Everything's had to be in slow motion. Because they're standing at the bus stop. And they're literally going past us with dogs. I haven't getting much footage and I've waited for half an hour. At least somebody's there. Obviously I'm not going to show his face. He's got his headphones on so I can't tell you what I'm seeing. Everything I've had to do has been so far has been in slow motion. and stuff like that. <laughs> and crap for filming to be truthful with it being winter now there's no coverage 
So I'm going to have to... Um, I can't do these stealth camps like this. I can, but I'm going to get caught. So I think the next one might be a hot tent camp and in the woods. So, uh, yeah. I think the only thing to do now is get the food on. We'll do that, eh? Pad a tie. <laughs> Let's go. So, tonight's gastronomic feat is the blue dragon pad thai, and you get these in the packs, and you get the nuts with them, you get the noodles, <clears throat> and you get the sauce. And all you have to do is buy the extra ingredients, i.e. chicken, prawns, whatever type of meat you want to go in. One egg, I've put two in, because I'm hungry. And some shallots some green beans and a green Don Lemon and that's all you need right so the water's boiling and I'm going just going off the instructions instructions noodles in first in Fust, as we say, in Geordie land, and they take five minutes. Don't know what happened there with the camera. Anyway, the phone's playing up. I need a new phone. sauce oh. 
you smell that sauce everything you need is in the sauce in the packet no need for 25 ingredients everything's in sauce in oh my god that smells absolutely amazing absolutely beautiful oh Right. It's a little bit soggy, so I shall simmer that, render it down, whatever the name is. It's just a little bit thicker. And then the rest of the ingredients will just go in. Bosh. So, scallions or spring onions or whatever you want to call them ring beans nuts air and there's just the egg to go after this I will the thickens up a little bit I think you put the noodles in now and then the egg in. I'm not too sure, but it doesn't matter. Like I see it's cowboy cooking. In fact, I think I will while there's some sauce so it soaks into the noodle sauce. The way I'm organised. I pay £15, £25, or whatever it is, for a takeaway when you can go to Asda and buy the ingredients and feed a family of three or four for half the price. And this turns out just as nice, I can promise you. Right, now we're in with the egg. it doesn't get mixed in with all the slop. Like I say, it's just cowboy cooking. And the last thing. fresh Maybe a bit more onion, onion. <laughs> some Don Lemon eggs whitening up there a little bit there now it's 
some lightning on the top. Right. Just gonna let that kill the way it is. Not mess about with it. Definitely put the egg in at the wrong time. I read the instructions, but I forgot. But no, it's coming out all right. It's coming out all right. It's not burnt. Fantastic walk. Walk here. So there have it. There we have it. Pad tie. Absolutely beautiful. And first thing I can taste. is the sauce and ginger if you like ginger you like this and the crunchiness of the spring onions and the green beans and you can taste the prawns oh oh oh, oh Mr. Peebly absolutely beautiful I've done myself this time. I think that's my favourite. I'll see you. That's number one. My Thai green curry, number two. And my salmon scrambled eggs, number three. Number two and number three. Uh, split decision. But that, just for the ginger and the sauce, absolutely amazing. Oh, definitely outdone myself this time. Wow. It would really cook for your family. I'll double up on the ingredients. Learn how to do it properly. And save yourselves an absolute fortune. I'm really loving these blue dragon stuff. Green dragon, blue dragon, whatever they're called. Wish I was sponsored off them. <laughs> and Trangia. That's enough to eat, and I don't like eating on camera or in front of people. I don't like watching it, people eat neither. Right, shout out. I've got to write a few down here. Chip Johnson. Thank you very much, mate, for your... For your... Whoos, for your support. Much appreciated, mate. Andy Underwood, thank you so much. JFD Computers, Dave, thank you so much for everything you've done with me phone and helping to set up me, um, well, trying to help to set up my YouTube channel. <laughs> but he's the man, he's a local lad, he lives in Ryup, he's got a computer shop and he'll help you out with anything, anything you need. E cigs, phones, computers, and he's a lovely bloke. 
and the next one is she hasn't really left as much to if it's a she or a he suspecta angelus you haven't left us your name or anything like that maybe she just want to remain anonymous and that's fine by me mate but thank you thank you so much much appreciated thank you to all my subscribers and the trolls for making the show where it is without you I'm nothing simple as that so thank you very much now do you mind if I have half an hour to myself and get stuck into this <laughs> bon appetit so cheers guys that was absolutely beautiful More Fosters, because I know it winds you up. I'll tell you why I drink Fosters in a later video. Or, not so much Fosters, but lager under 4%. 4%. Anyway, never mind. Right, I want to tell you about, a little bit about where I'm camping at. It's Cherry Knoll Mental Hospital. That's what it's known as now. But it used to be an old Victorian lunatic asylum. You know the, um, sorry the camera's wobbling about. Do you know the old Victorian building styles? Well that's what it used to be. It was somewhere where you went. Your family sent you if there was something wrong with you. You were even sent if you were pregnant and you brought shame on the family. You were sent if you were alcoholic or the, just if your family, rich people, if the family was embarrassed or things like that. Not everybody that went there was mental. But one thing that did happen to everybody, when you went there, you didn't get back out. Maybe it's 10, 15, 20 year, if you were lucky. Because basically, once you got in, your mental health declined. Your physical health declined. The staff, some of them were just pure evil. It's well documented. If you, if you, um, if you Google it, there's a lot of deaths in here, and obviously it was all covered up. And but it was like it was basically like a prison. And what they used to do was they used to do the electric shocks, um, electric shock treatments. They used to lobotomize people. Seconds. And that's where you get the seeing from, tapped, or oh, she's tapped, or oh, she's not right in the head, or oh, she's tapped. And that comes from what they used to do, and I think they used to do it here. All uh, like lunatic asylums in the 18th century, 19th, early 19th century. <coughs> what they used to do was they used to drill into your skull a little hole in your skull, get a metal rod, exactly where it needed to be, I don't know whereabouts, and then tap on the metal rod and just puncture your brain, just a tiny little and it just used to turn you into a cabbage. You could function, but they used to do that with violent prisoners, people who were out of control, and the electric shocks and just used to turn them to zombies. Obviously made the staff's life easier. So, but now, it's an amazing facility. As you can see, I'll take this out and I'll, I'll get as close as I can to the building. And I'll come out the camp and I'll go around to the bus stop and I'll show you around. But now, it's, um, it's up, like I say, it's absolutely amazing. The staff are completely different to what they were 50 years or 100 years ago. I know some of the staff are working there I used to work in there as well. But what they do is they teach them to reintegrate back into society. It's not just people 
with mental health conditions, people with um, drug addiction, alcoholics who've lost the plot, and um, people with depression, but anyway, they get the best of food, they get the best treatment, they get the best of drugs, if they need them. And then they've got flats and everything. It's a massive complex now that must have spent a hundred million on this place at least. And they've got their own flats, but they're still looked after, but they're slowly brought back out into community, which is the way it should be. So that's the history of this place. So now you know if people say, oh she's tapped her, oh he's tapped. Now you know where I come from. Drill hole, just a little drill hole in the skull, just enough to get a little rod through and and then you were damaged for life. I think I'm a little bit tapped for doing stuff like this. <laughs> I shouldn't see that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, I was only joking. But I I'm definitely tapped me. That food was beautiful. And I'm not going to say why, because I keep on saying it. It's a Trangier set. And the blue dragon. Green dragon, red dragon. Amazing. I only had two cans tonight, I can't be bothered with it. I'm getting bored. There's my other can. I thought I drank it. I must have had three. <laughs> right, enough of me waffling on. I'm going to bring this out. I'm going to go as close as I can to the building and then take you out on the main road and we'll see. As somebody mentioned it in the comments, it would be nice if you got out to camp and did a, like an aerial view. Well, I can do that, but I've got to wait till two o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, I'm going to get caught with the risky stealth, uh, stealth camps I do. But it's a good idea, and if I can do it, I will do it. But it's um, all the traffic's died down there. That's a bus there now. And I think that's the last bus, so come on, if I get caught, I get caught and we'll risk it. Let's go, Hombreas. Let's get as close as we can. Right, there's a little hill there, so I've got a bit of coverage. No dog walkers. There's about 20 of them gone past us today. Right, I'm coming up the hill. So that's the main building. There's a nice pond there. Right. Might have X-ray cameras. Not X-ray, what do you call them? Infrared. See people snaking about. If somebody comes out and I get caught, I'm caught. Right, we'll go out to the front of the camp. Why oh, I'm Bonnie. This path. Right. right, I'll just get out. As if I'm walking, as if I'm a walker. So, that's the bus stop. I mean, I'm basically behind that tree. Two meters. I walk up here. And 
that's the famous Raya Pass. But it looks like a donkey that's having a shit, to be truthful. And that's a replacement <laughs> because the other one was made of copper or brass and it got stolen. So there was hell on with the local community getting onto the council. And people started putting rocky horses and little donkeys and um, toys and stuff on top and I think the council got sick of it and replaced it. And I don't know who um, carved that or moulded that. But it's better than nothing. Right, back into camp. <laughs> I'm definitely tapped. out right guys that's enough for one night if you've watched this far thank you very much but I won't bore you with me gear I'm going to sit back relax watch a few videos till two o'clock in the morning Now I'm thinking somebody's going to be coming because I've been over that hill and stuff, but I'll not bore you with that details. I'm going to sit back, relax, put some movies on till two o'clock in the morning. And I'll see you in the Morgan. Good night. Well, good morning, guys. It's 20 past 7 and it's still dark. It's just starting to get light now. So I'm going to have to get packed away and skedaddle. Skedaddle out of here. Before everybody starts getting up and going to the bus stop and getting to work and everything. So I'll see you when I'm packed away. Right guys, there's somebody at the bus stop now. So we'll just get out of here. Let's go. Well, another one in the bag. So if you like that, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next Bonnie Lad adventure. Let's see if I get across this road to you.